Okay, so this lecture will be rather a weird cookie. We are starting from the axiom that astronomy, physical astronomy, scientific physical astronomy is the study of shadows of essential philosophical divine phenomena. It is a science as necessary as it is, as important as it is, and as useful as it is, but it doesn't cover the whole story. So, when the ancients deified stars, the, they believed that a star is a god, for example, or the Chaldeans that it is a corridor of fire from higher realms, and so on and so on, they didn't just mythologize in the metopoeia. They reported certain experiences in deep receptive mystic states and in techniques of ascension in order to transform their spirits, to transform their souls. Now I would like to begin with a typical description of the sun as the star in the physical terms with uh, its layers or the corona, the uh, chromosphere, the photosphere, the convection zone, the hypergranulation that is going on in the outer layers, highly complex phenomena of thermonuclear radiation of the whole physics behind it, of which I recommend uh, Kuttner's Astronomy A Physical Perspective that is explaining it in very succinct and basic language that you might find it quite interesting. So another book that I would like to recommend on physics is Handbook of Practical Astronomy by Gunther D. Roth. I once owned a telescope and it was highly useful for astrophotography and understanding certain phenomena from the physical perspective. Now the Arabs believed that stars have their natures just like planets do. For example, Al-Qaeda in Ursa Major. So uh, let us use the Aladdin imager and try to find al Khalid in DSS catalog, which will be colored in this case. It's a free program that I highly recommend. So this is a faraway star, light years away from us. Yet I believe that uh, certain mystics, astronomers, philosophers, king priests, could read the nature of this star and receive the proper optical occult rayings of its nature to understand it much better. That's why different stars were assigned certain natures, sometimes commingling with, for example, Martian Jupiterian, lunar Venusian natures, something to make it more graspable in order to understand the nature of a given god or a goddess that was a star. Now what I would like to do here is not to double in physics but to move directly into the philosophical essences and the techniques of ascension on the example of the Mithraic Persian cave. Now I won't get into details of the Mithraic mysteries but I will describe a very simplified way of understanding the cave, the cosmic cave, the temple as the cosmos in order to lead to certain transformations and rituals that may help you feel or understand how it might have happened through initiatory practice, through mystagogic and pneumagogic practice for human souls and spirit to reach for the stars. Now it's not just a telltale story I might refer to the Somnium Stipionis written by Cicero, but I am, might as well refer to my own nightly voyage. Voyage. So in 2014 I had the capability or the capacity to ascend in soul through Earth, through all the planetary spheres in the solar system, going to trans-Plutonian currents, 
until I hit the stars and could observe the beautiful galaxies and the stars with my very own soul or eyes of the soul. Thanks Odin, by the way, the Saturn of the Scandinavian tribes, who facilitated this journey for me. Now, there are three kinds of ascension. One is that of a soul carried away to the higher spheres and to the stars, as in the narration in Somnium Stipionis by Cicero. The second is that of the spirit carried posthumously to its rightful domain after the Dionysian tomb, the Sakada, the body has been left behind. And the third is an astral journey which takes place only during a ritual and is associated with ideas of ascension by similitude. I have encountered two types of ascension in my life. The first belonged to the ascent of the soul to the stars. The second was a complex ritual, a ceremony that tried to repeat the ascension in the sense of resemblance, as if repeating the steps that the soul took previously. The third spiritual ascension posthumously is the crowning of the Trismegistus and the latter means descend in soul to the abyss, vitriol. Excel in life, ascend after the Herculean zodiacal task is done. Because Hercules achieved 12 tasks and there are 12 zodiacal signs or constellations. And also, during the feast of the Mitra, there were 12 zodiacal kings and queens. Now that was later adopted by Christianity regarding his disciples, but there were never 12. That was adapted from Mitraism, which was a concurrent religion. The rapture of the soul was mediated by a Saturnian deity, Odin, and it happened in my dreams and visions. First I was questioned about my honesty and truthfulness, and when no fault was found, I found myself in the neighborhood of my childhood in Warsaw, with two golden discs spinning so fast that they represented a sacred orb, a sphere attached to my head. Remembering earlier lessons of flying that were part of my oneric upbringing curricula, I lifted my soul through the city, above it, into the clouds, through the atmosphere of the earth, passed through the planets of the solar system, and I found myself flying at high speeds through the stars. There I was suspended for a moment, watching everything with joy and delight. The Chaldean Yinges, or sacred beings that carried my soul through the stars, had golden wings, although I cannot remember if they had any human features. Most of the Angeli Bonum Daemones and Agathos Daemones I see with second sight look like a pair of wings, or a sun disk with serpents and wings, that is deities of Igigi, extending from them. They have no human features at all. I believe that the Egyptian, Babylonian and Zoroastrian reliefs they represent were chosen by the deities to be intelligible to me in the autophania, self-revelation. The gods use the symbols that humans understand. Whether these are their true forms, I do not know, but they denote their existence, so there is no need to argue about it in the eyes of the beholder. Several times these deities incarnated in me, and they fell like lightning into my body. My key field became as big as district cities. Not once I felt an armor and helmet when I met a Spartan king who had ascended centuries ago. So much for this report. I will focus on the ability that does not require the help of the gods, but the cooperation with them. That is, how to imitate this kind of ascension with a series of rituals, ceremonies and meditations. An artificial ascension of the spirit that once trained moves through all these spheres, visiting planets or distant stars, gathering everything there is together in order to train the mind and the soul and pave the way for the spirit to re-enter the divine realms once it is prepared. For this purpose I will use the analogy of the Persian Mithraic cave. The womb of the cosmos is a cave, Vesica Pistis is the entrance to the Stella Regina, Isis. Isis is the follower of Osiris and the first star to rise after the Pleiades. Aldebaran, Osiris, Sire, Sirius, the dog stars, or Isis, Heros, Heros. She is the Hems woman of the divine sheep. Sheep. Why so? Because Isis, as the base of the Pythagorean triangle, represents the justice of the triad. Isis, Osiris, Harpocrates, hypotenuse of the triangle, most holy triangle among the Ennead. We do not have to enter any artificial or other cave to do our tasks. When we are in the forest at night, the Mitra cave is above us. By the stars, when we are in the room, we can pretend it is the cave. The principle is to restate the spatio-temporal dimension, transposing and interpreting it in both directions. 
the space of the ritual becomes the cosmic cave. The cosmic cave becomes the space. We can call it a fantasy, but with enough focus and depth of operation, the sacralized, consecrated area becomes the temple of the stars. A miniature temple of the stars. We must not take it lightly, for to consecrate a place, we must invite the spirits to perform this theurgic miracle for us, otherwise we are mere fools playing rituals to no true effect. I have often been one to deceive myself, but when it began to work with the right intention, action, deed, preparation, then it began to work. I used to play Gustav Holst, the planets in the Mitraic order, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Moon, Sun, Saturn as the highest, or in the heliocentric order, for the true astronomical one. The reason for the metric order was mystagogical, pneumagogical, not astronomically correct, but astromystically of great importance, like the sacred directions from which the souls enter from the sun in Cancer, Cautus, and exit in Capricorn, Cautopathus. How should we approach this ritual? After delineating and consecrating the sacred space, we initiate apotropaic and devotional rites to honor the gods. Then, with knowledge of the theological structure of a particular tradition, we conjure up a delicate structure that provides a scaffold for the operation. Sabotaging Leibniz, what is not in the world of platonic ideas, cannot be in the land of notions. What is not in the land of concepts cannot arise spontaneously in the intellect. What is not in the senses cannot be in the mind. What is not in the mind cannot interlock with the intellect to enter the land of divine notions. Therefore, the theological structure must be present, educated, learned and reasoned, absorbed, mature and strong, in order to arrive at works with the help of this structure. This structure is a form of coordinates in the dynamics of moving concepts that fix the content of our operation in forms. In a deeply concentrated meditation, in a performance of any kind, we represent planets, we invoke their intelligence, and we are both the subjects of their destiny and the designer. We follow their essence, imagine the attributes associated with them, wear their clothes, robes, garbs and symbols, ascend, request rites of passage, preparations. This is not without effect on our lives. Someone who walks with mercurial spirits and suddenly targets Saturn can be plunged into great suffering in real life. Be careful on these paths, because this is not a playground and it can ruin or enhance your life. It is of serious benefit to invoke those intelligent spirits of past people that they used to be, that is, in the case of Mitraic initiations, Korax, Mercury, Nymphus, Venus, Miles, Mars, Leo, Jupiter, Perses, Munhel, Dromus, and Pater, Saturn, or Korax and Hiena as a counterpart, or Pater and Mater as a counterpart, or Leo and Lea as a counterpart. Yes, females did participate. Pay tribute to these before you. If you are dealing with the rank of pater, you are dealing with great spirits. Marcus Aurelius was a pater patrum, so was Pretextatus, a golden eagle of the Metraic Mysteries. If you do not follow the chain of etheric spiritual initiations, you may end up in the Saturnian guidance and plunge headlong into existential hells, black melancholy, dark nights of the soul. It simply means that you were not prepared. Let me give you an example in the form of a story I once left as a review of the Cult of the Black Cube but, uh, by Arthur Moros. A man entered the temple of Saturn and demanded, give me all the gold you have. He was slain, disarmed, crucified and put on display, then quartered and burned to ash. Another person, concerned about the cruelty, asked the priest, why? The priest replied, because he wanted gold without dying for it. The person asked, is he in Elysia? After all, you killed him in the most cruel way. The priest replied, When you die for things for which you are not prepared, the fates are particularly cruel. The person asked again, He wanted to be your acolyte, a disciple. The priest answered, Those who are not entitled to cross the threshold defense will be crushed at the mortuaries of the rings of Saturn. The person asked another time, Why did not you accept him? The priest replied, Becoming an emperor and remaining an emperor is a difficult task. Obtaining the gold depends on the constant appeasement of the lead. The person asked, what is the gold? The priest took off his mask and revealed himself as Marcus Aurelius, Aurelian Therion himself. My friend, to enter this phase of gold, you must defeat the wickedness of men. And you have passed the test. One head lost and beheaded, another word initiate saved. Come, join us.